Welcome to DEF CON 23. Uh, I'm Russ. I am the Chief of Operations for the conference. I've been here for 17 years, which is why I'm standing here today instead of hung over in my room. How many of you are feeling okay this morning? That's not too bad. How many of you are new to DEF CON? That's not bad either. I got to tell you, after all these years, I still can't predict what you guys are going to do. Um, we're almost out of the badges, even though we up the numbers. Um, I, I do my damnedest, and you guys surprise me every single year. Um, I wish you'd stop that. <laughs> um, so we're going to queue off this year. We're going to show you the trailer. How many of you have already seen the trailer online? All right, so not many. So this is going to be really, really cool. The theme this year is kind of this film noir thing. That's why we're walking around with the albums. All the artwork reflects it. It's very cool. If you haven't already started getting involved in Lost Badge Challenge and that sort of thing, please do. We have a ton of stuff going on in the villages and the event center over in Bally's. Um, we've kind of divided everything up. Um, hopefully every one of you is wearing a Fitbit because there's a lot of stuff that's just, yep, me. Um, go over there, all the actions over there. We have the speakers and the information and the vendors and stuff over here. We tried to separate it out a little bit. The parties are going to be over in Bally's tonight for the most part. If you have questions, ask somebody in a red shirt. Be safe, have a good time, and let's roll the demo so they can see that, please. again. This must be some kind of prophetic truth. Master coincidence, certainly, but it couldn't be. No, these were not imagined patterns. The mind seeking to connect accidental dots with blurred lines. This was something real. Was something elegant in its simplicity, yet dangerous in its enigmatic complexity. Undeniable in all its obscure perfection. Would everyone else be so blind? Or were there others who observed this covert conspicuousness? Able to untangle this perplexity, understood this cipher that surrounds this key, this 23. So we're here. So we're going to kick things off this morning with our keynote speaker. He's got a very long and rich history in security and also in research areas so, and in legal. So I hope you'll, you'll listen to what he has to say. Um, this is Alejandro Mayorkas. Um, he is our Deputy Secretary of Homeland Security. He was confirmed in 2013. You can hear uh, Lost Boy over there starting their video too. Um, he comes from University of California, Berkeley. We have anyone from that area? I heard somebody hooting and holler. Um, he's got a law degree. He's got all sorts of education. And he's got a lot of insight into what the government's thinking about information security, cybersecurity right now. So if you... Help me welcome the Deputy Secretary. Uh, good morning. Uh, thanks very much for taking a little bit of time um, uh, to hear me out and um, hopefully you'll uh, ask questions and share your concerns or thoughts uh, with me and we can have uh, more of a conversation than I uh, just give a, give a speech. I will tell you at the outset that uh, I was instructed uh, by my colleagues uh, not to bring my uh, government phone uh, with me uh, this morning because um, uh, it might uh, suffer an intrusion. And I said, uh, I don't believe it. Uh, let them take their best shot. And uh, I challenge any of you to make my phone ring during my remarks. And if you do, uh, you'll get a... Um, free job with the government. So, uh, so give it a shot. Give it a shot. <clears throat> you know, I, I, um, I, I have to tell you, I, I, I tend to be um, 
uh, retrospective um, when I uh, experience new things. I tend to reflect on my own past and my own life and the decisions I made. And as I walk through uh, this morning uh, the lobby area and I went into the uh, DEF CON swag room and then the vendor swag room, it, I, I, I thought, quite frankly, of my high school years and I thought about 1974 19, through 1977 and it's hard for me to believe that I walked by what was then a very nascent uh, computer uh, room and actually walked by the future. Um, but we, we are the decisions that we make and uh, there's always uh, days ahead as well as days behind so I look forward to developing greater skills uh, in this arena than I have now. I, I uh, you know, yesterday I had the, uh, the privilege and um, uh, the experience of, uh, of sharing some thoughts at, uh, at Black Hat and I've been looking forward uh, to this morning as well and I, I have to tell you, I find the talent uh, that is resident here uh, to be stunning. It is, in my view, a combination of uh, brilliance, uh, expertise, uh, ingenuity and creativity, and also uh, just a risk tolerance, a tolerance uh, or, or appetite uh, to experiment and to see uh, what happens. And um, I want to talk a little bit more about what that means or what it could mean to us in the Department of Homeland Security uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, but I also, I, I want to also express uh, the fact that we have in the Department of Homeland Security, uh, in my opinion, that same level of uh, brilliance, uh, expertise, uh, ingenuity, and risk tolerance. Perhaps not in me, uh, but certainly, and for example, uh, the three members of our U.S. CERT team, Computer Emergency Readiness Team, uh, that I interacted with yesterday at Black Hat, uh, our ICS CERT team, our Industrial Control System CERT team uh, uh, that's resident in D.C. Uh, these teams fly all over the country, uh, respond to intrusions not just in the public sector, uh, not just um, uh, that the government suffers, but also that the private sector uh, uh, experiences and assists uh, companies and entities and institutions in identifying uh, the intruder, uh, expelling the intruder, and remediating uh, the system. Uh, it's, uh, it's a tremendous uh, a core of individuals. What troubles me uh, a great deal, and it's something that was quite frankly um, underscored uh, yesterday in the questions and comments I received uh, during and following uh, my remarks at Black Hat, is that there's a divide uh, between um, the two uh, groups, the two collection uh, or communities of individuals. And it's a divide of, uh, of mistrust. That uh, there's a trust deficit, as I called it yesterday, between all of you and uh, us uh, in, in the government. And um, I know that it's born uh, of quite a number of things uh, over the years. Uh, and of course, in, in, recent, uh, in recent past. Uh, whether it's an intrusion uh, that we suffered that speaks to uh, the state of uh, our own network security, uh, whether it's some of the practices uh, or principles uh, that we um, uh, execute uh, or espouse. But I'm very um, dedicated to doing what we can to bridge uh, that divide. Um, you know, the, uh, it, it, it should be, after all, a more unified uh, community. If we speak about the internet as a global commons, then I think we um, have to have a common purpose and a common uh, understanding to achieve at least uh, those things uh, about which we agree and hopefully reconcile uh, more effectively uh, our differences. 
I think that's the only way, quite frankly, that we in the Department of Homeland Security at least will achieve, uh, I think, our primary goal of building an ecosystem of information uh, sharing. This is uh, quite troubling to me. Um, um, I've actually never seen uh, NyQuil in that bottle before. That's probably not going to happen, by the way. Uh, um, so I, I'm sorry. May I interrupt? You did. We, <laughs> well played, sir. We have a little tradition here at DEF CON. Do I have, are you, is this thing live? All right, screw it. We have a little tradition here at DEF CON. Do you all know what it is? We have a first time speaker. You know, you know let, let, me, let me share some th a thought with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to share two things with you. First of all, I'm going to share a story about my landlord uh, when I was a federal prosecutor. His name was actually Jack Daniels. <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. And every morning, he was 94 years old. He had a beautiful mane of hair. Um, his skin looked as though he was 27. And um, he lamented the fact that he had to um, wear reading glasses uh, to read the paper and read novels um, uh, in the morning and in the evening. And every morning, I left my office, I left my uh, apartment early, I lived above him. I left my apartment early to go to work to the smell of frying bacon every single morning. And every single evening, I came home late and had to pick Jack out of the bushes because he used to have a couple very tall vodka tumblers uh, to end each day. It just goes to show you what the key of life is. It has something to do with, with Jack Daniels. Um, it is very difficult to talk about a trust deficit and how to bridge that deficit and really build trust when I'm a fraud and this is actually water. So, That's the official story, and he's sticking with it. So, so, I'll, so I'll tell you what. As long as you promise to make it small, I'll take a shot of the real stuff. Hey! And it's got to be small because after this, I'm actually meeting with TSA colleagues. And... Uh, <laughs> That's exactly right. All right, you're a trooper, man. Cheers. 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 Def Con. Cheers. Thank you. That, that's my way. That's my uh, way of really uh, actually saluting uh, all of you. I am, I am captivated. Uh, I am really captivated by the talent. Uh, uh, that is here and the potential that it represents for the world. Can we so, get a round of applause? That's a reason real trophy. That that was my first of the day. By the way, it may not be my last. Um, so we, what we aspire to, um, is an environment where um, the cyber threat indicator is, is not um, of proprietary value, uh, but is actually uh, something that ex is, is exchanged publicly. What we feel uh, we can do um, more ably than anyone else in the government because of our unique position as a civilian agency, uh, we're also uniquely positioned at the intersection of the private sector uh, our responsibility uh, as um, uh, really the chief network security agency within the federal government, uh, critical uh, infrastructure, uh, and other um, uh, equity holders in this environment is really um, receive the threat indicators, uh, and uh, we are building uh, uh, through a sticks and taxi system uh, the capacity in automated form to then disseminate those threat indicators out uh, to the community so that we raise the level 
of network uh, security, we raise uh, the baseline uh, more ably, and we at the very least uh, avoid the replication of an intrusion that one institution or one enterprise uh, suffered. And the only way that we are going to be in a position uh, to receive those threat uh, indicators is if you, is, if you trust us. Uh, if you trust us in terms of our capabilities and you also trust us with respect to the integrity uh, of our um, actions. And um, we're also uniquely positioned uh, in the federal government because we're the only department that has a statutorily created Office of Privacy and a statutorily created Office of Civil Rights and Civil Liberties. And those equities are brought to bear in everything that we do in the network security arena and, in fact, uh, everything that we do as a Department uh, of Homeland Security. Yesterday, um, somebody said, look, uh, you know, if, if, I've got a, if I've got a threat indicator, if I've got the keys to the kingdom, uh, quite frankly, uh, I'm not going to, you know, my risk tolerance might be high, but I'm not going to experiment and turn that uh, over uh, to you uh, to find out whether you're worthy of our trust uh, or not. And I, I understand that and I appreciate it. And what I said was, look, uh, uh, trust is not built or rebuilt or regained uh, overnight. Uh, it takes time. And what I would ask, uh, if it's fair of me to do so, is that you uh, start somewhere. Start somewhere where your uh, willingness to take a risk with us is manageable to you uh, and let us, um, let us prove to you uh, what our capabilities are and let us prove to you what the integrity uh, of our actions and our intentions are. And um, uh, that's what uh, I would ask uh, of you. And, and let's, let's see uh, what, we can, what we can do and what we can do uh, together. Um, you know, it's interesting, I, I, I heard, and, and it's very important uh, for you uh, to, give us, uh, to give us that chance. At least it's important to us in terms of what we are doing. Uh, another comment that I heard yesterday was, you know what, we'd like to, um, we'd like to validate uh, what you do. It's very difficult sometimes to validate from the outside. And um, maybe you can, you, can, um, you can have a hacker um, validate uh, your capabilities and validate uh, the integrity of, of your actions. And I think uh, actually that's a terrific idea. So I've, I've got a couple thoughts. I thought about it a lot overnight. I thought a lot about uh, the day I had had at Black Hat uh, and the people I had I had met and the ideas that, uh, that we exchanged. And I, I thought of two things, and I'll take them back um, uh, to DC, and I'll share them with you now and see if they, uh, see if they fly, and I'd be curious to, to hear if they fly uh, with you. Uh, one is uh, drawn from my experience when I was leading uh, the immigration agency uh, uh, in the government, the, the uh, agency U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services that administers the legal immigration system. Uh, in our country, we were um, we administered visas uh, uh, for individuals that wanted to come and join businesses here uh, in the United States from from abroad, and it was remarkable how out of touch we were uh, as an agency, uh, out of touch we were with the startup community. Uh, some of the questions and policies th that we had uh, would ask questions of individuals like. How many employees does the business have? Can we have the organizational chart? What's the floor plan? How much lease? How much space do you lease? And the like. And it did not take into account that the, the next generation uh, of businesses that will reinvent the world uh, could be um, uh, developing uh, in a cubicle somewhere or in a garage, a basement, uh, or unfurnished a room. And so what we did, uh, what I did was I said, you know what, we don't have a, certainly we don't have a monopoly uh, on good ideas. We have a 
monopoly on very slow ideas, but not on necessarily very good ideas. But you know what? Let's bring in the talent uh, into the um, uh, into the agency. And what we did was we brought in uh, a number of entrepreneurs uh, who were willing to take their time. They had done uh, well enough, or uh, they were supported by the entities for whom they worked at that time. They came in and joined us full time for six months, uh, and, and then they extended, so they ended up staying a year. So uh, that was an entrepreneurs in residence program. And what I would ask is, uh, how about um, doing a hacker in residence uh, program in the Department of Homeland Security? And people who are willing to devote their time uh, come in um, and lend us uh, your talent, uh, your skills, uh, your expertise, uh, your creative way of looking at things, uh, and not only necessarily validating uh, what we do, but actually helping us improve it. Uh, the second idea I had was uh, to create, uh, frankly, an advisory uh, council of hackers, uh, uh, individuals who may not uh, have the flexibility um, uh, to join us on a full-time basis, uh, but can take uh, a slice of their time uh, uh, here and again uh, to uh, provide us uh, advice, to take a look at what we're doing, and uh, to essentially achieve the same goal of validating uh, or uh, improving uh, that uh, which we do. I am uh, tremendously uh, proud of being in the federal government. Uh, I've, I'm now in my 18th year. I've been in and out of uh, government and the, and the private sector. And um, I think there's an incredible uh, opportunity to impact uh, the life of, of many people, just as I think you uh, understand and appreciate and execute uh, that very uh, opportunity. And I'd like to uh, partner uh, with you. We would like to partner with you and see if we can build uh, a bridge of trust and actually uh, develop uh, a community of interest and a commonality of, of purpose. You know, yesterday I heard, uh, I was in a, a couple meetings with uh, individuals who, um, who shared with me their perspective of uh, how, uh, how uh, Wassenaar uh, is, a, um, is a train wreck uh, in, their, in their view. And uh, they shared uh, perspectives uh, with me uh, to which I had not uh, previously uh, been exposed. Uh, I had a, a few thoughts. Number one, I've got to take those perspectives uh, back home, and we've got to take a look at um, what Wassenaar is and what it means. Uh, it was, hi Katie, good morning. Katie is one of the individuals uh, who um, uh, provided me with tremendous insights uh, into uh, Wassenaar, uh, and uh, while it had its, uh, or has its noble intentions of uh, protecting uh, human rights and fundamental human values, um, uh, certainly I heard a chorus of views uh, that it did not uh, accomplish uh, that goal uh, at a price uh, uh, that proved uh, uh, worthy. Um, uh, I did note that uh, Wassenaar received 270 comments and uh, there were thousands and thousands of people at Black Hat and there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people at DEF CON. And adhering to the uh, adage that uh, uh, the keystroke is uh, mightier than the sword, uh, if you um, have a voice that you choose to express with respect to uh, very important government uh, policies and initiatives, I hope you will exercise that voice through the channels uh, that we have available and the channels that you yourselves can create. But I do very much want uh, to build a community 
and I'm very dedicated to building that community of trust, and I really appreciate the opportunity uh, to share uh, some uh, uh, comments and thoughts with you, and I'd love to open it up uh, to questions and, and comments and hear what you have to say and what you think. So thanks very much. Anyone give it a shot, and I'll, not this shot, I mean, uh, a shot at a question, and I'll, I'll repeat the, if you shout it at me, I'll, I can repeat it. So the, 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 the question was, do I think that we should, and tell me if I capture this uh, correctly, d do I think that we should be required to demonstrate the effectiveness of the security measures that we take and essentially impose upon the public before we actually impose them? For example, um, the security measures that we take at the airports. Um, his buddy waited an hour in line uh, because of our TSA uh, processes. Um, let, let me say that it's, um, it's not an all or nothing proposition. I think that with respect to some, we do and we can and maybe we should do more and I'll, I'll take a look at that. With respect to some, um, I'm not sure uh, that uh, we are able to, by virtue of the fact uh, that some of those security measures are seen and unseen by necessity. But I think, you know, it, it raises a very important point, that trust is very difficult uh, to build if we're not open and transparent. Uh, so I think your point is well taken, um, and we'll take a look at what measures um, we have and the effectiveness um, that we can demonstrate publicly. I will tell you um, that certainly the, um, the ineffectiveness of some of our measures was demonstrated publicly uh, in a report uh, that was published by our Inspector General. And I think that there are reports available that shed some light on the effectiveness or lack of effectiveness of some of the things we do, whether it's Inspector General reports or GAO uh, reports. But that's a fair point, and I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the question in the service of openness and transparency. Thank you. Hi. Yeah. So um, the question um, centers on, I think, the OPM uh, breach. There are individuals who have provided uh, to the government uh, the most intimate information, um, the most confidential and private information. I have on, uh, on multiple occasions um, uh, in anticipation of uh, nominations and confirmations. And um, uh, uh, should, should people do that uh, if, um, uh, you know, what is the condition of the government, uh, uh, the government's capability to protect uh, that information? You, you mentioned, uh, you, you termed it a, a leak. 
um, which it isn't. A leak is when an individual in the government voluntarily um, uh, provides information uh, externally. Uh, this was um, uh, an intrusion. Um, and what is, uh, you know, what is the government doing about uh, securing its networks and what's our role in the Department of Homeland Security? I'm sorry, it's the... Oh, and, and also uh, the contractual arrangements uh, that with, with other companies. Okay, so uh, um, a compound question. Um, the, the, the network security uh, of some government agencies and departments is not where it needs to be. Um, subsequent to the OPM uh, uh, breach, uh, the government embarked upon a 30-day sprint to address some of the more easily accessible uh, remedies that could be instituted. Uh, there are, as you know uh, better than do I, there are immediate fixes, there are short-term, medium, and long-term, and all of those efforts are well underway, uh, not just the, the sprint, which is a, a blocking and tackling exercise, but medium and long-term exercises. We are taking a look at our contractual relationships. We, are, um, we have placed in our contractual language requirements with respect to network security of the uh, entities with which we contract. Uh, the Department of Homeland Security is one of the leaders uh, uh, in the government in ensuring uh, that other government departments and agencies raise the level of their network uh, security. We have a, a, a pivotal role in that. Uh, the Secretary of Homeland Security uh, was empowered with the capacity to issue operational directives uh, to other department and agency heads. He issued the first one, uh, uh, I think it was subsequent to the OPM breach, and we are exercising our authority in that regard. So uh, the future is uh, uh, brighter than uh, uh, the past. Thank you. Uh, what uh, what exactly uh, should be disclosed in the aggregate? So, so the, the, the question, uh, I'm gonna uh, yeah, paraphrase it and shorten it if you don't mind and, and tell me if I've captured it in, in spirit. Um, uh, in terms of, of, of voluntary disclosures, uh, 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 are we planning uh, to uh, aggregate uh, information uh, about uh, intrusions that the government uh, has suffered or intrusions about which we learn uh, and disseminate uh, that information uh, broadly so that in the service, I think, of, of raising the level of awareness. Uh, and yes, we are. Yes, we are. I was going to actually share some remarks about um, the disclosure regime. And quite frankly, uh, you know, candidly, yesterday, I learned that um, um, I'm, I'm ankle to knee deep uh, in, um, uh, in my uh, facility uh, with that issue. Uh, I know it's a very sensitive issue and there are um, uh, uh, strongly held and competing views. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, 
I'm going to refrain from commenting until I, I build a, a, greater, um, a greater facility with that a particular issue. I will say this, if I may, just a quick other note of admiration. I also found it uh, extraordinarily impressive the, uh, while there are uh, competing views about some very core issues uh, with respect to um, uh, the internet, uh, uh, behavioral patterns, and the like, it's, it's, um, it's, it's extremely important and profound that the competing views uh, are so grounded in ethical uh, principles about the meaning of the conduct and the meaning of the issues and the ramifications uh, for uh, the creation of opportunities and the ability to actually exploit in the best sense of the term to exploit capabilities and talents. It, it's, a, it's a very uh, profound discourse. Sir. So I appreciate that. So um, the, the, the point wa uh, made was that there are, and I, I'm, I'm very eager to capture this fairly, um, uh, that there are two uh, things at play. There's trust and there's respect. And um, it's very important that uh, our department, if we seek to achieve both, engage with this community and appear at, uh, at DEF CON uh, and I think interact uh, with, this, with this community uh, more fulsomely. And um, that's why I'm here. And, I, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity. And I agree. Sir. Uh, uh, probably, he said, uh, uh, it's not going to be on my watch, but the, on the run-up to the 4th of July, the uh, visa system went down. I see. Was it a system failure or was it a, uh, an intentional uh, effort uh, to reduce the inbound flow of individuals? And my understanding is that it was a system failure. Thank you. Trust go a long way because 
Um, so, um, so uh, uh, the gentleman, um, uh, I'm going to summarize and uh, said, uh, you know, the trust quotient is not increasing uh, with uh, our articulation of our position with respect to encryption uh, and uh, the request for a back door. And uh, while um, he thanked me for being here, he um, challenged me to say, that a back door is a bad idea. Okay? Let me. It's the only thing that got an applause so far. I, I, do, I, uh, I, do, take, I do take note of that. Um, let, let, me, let, me say, let me say this. Okay? I know what the problem is and I don't know what the solution is, okay? Uh, there are individuals um, who wish to do us harm uh, on small scales, and by a small scale, um, I don't think the victimized family would consider it to be small, a small scale and a large scale. And what happens is we lose track of critical communications that enable us to interdict uh, a violent act uh, before it wreaks damage, and that does have happen, and there have been public examples in the last 60 days, and we lose the ability to do that. And that is the problem. And I have heard certainly not only yesterday and today, but before this week, the concerns about a back door, and I understand and appreciate that, and so what I can say is I am well aware of the problem. I am reminded of it every single morning in an information brief that I receive with respect to the terrorist threat domestically and abroad, and I, am, I do not know what the answer is. Uh, I cannot say yes, and I cannot say no. And I'm just being honest with you. I, I understand, I understand what, what, uh, what people have, some, the, the uh, opposition to a, a back door, that it compromises uh, security um, uh, to a greater degree uh, than uh, our, our concerns would dictate. That's one uh, of the concerns. Um, I'm just not an expert in encryption. Um, I'm not an expert in the ramifications. I well understand the concerns, and I don't know what, and all I can say is I don't know what the solution is. And I'm just being candid. So companies uh, are suffering intrusions. Uh, they are becoming uh, increasingly frustrated um, uh, with uh, the fact that uh, the, the risk or the threat remains, um, and they're considering uh, offensive conduct. And uh, 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 what do I think about uh, that sort of vigilante uh, actions which runs afoul of the law? So if it runs afoul of the law, um, uh, I'm not going to uh, support it. Um, 
at least that's not to say that I agree with every law, uh, but um, I, I do not, in this area, I, I think vigilantism is far more destructive than co constructive, and I would, um, I would uh, strongly uh, urge uh, companies not to engage uh, in that uh, uh, conduct. And the fact of the matter is, um, it underscores the need for all of us, I think, uh, to work together to um, uh, 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 strengthen network security. You know, when I travel around the country and I, I speak to um, uh, companies, and when I travel around the world and I speak to uh, uh, companies um, uh, internationally and, and governments, it seems that it's a, uh, increasingly a given that an intrusion will occur. The question is, how quickly can it be detected, expelled, and remediated? Um, and uh, what I think we can do is um, more ably um, defend against the replication uh, of intrusion. So if one company suffers it, another should not. And that um, is premised upon the sharing and circulation and dissemination uh, of information. Uh, and then um, sharing best practices and, uh, and the expertise and talent that resides in this room. I'm getting the hook. Um, I want to thank you all very much for uh, uh, giving me uh, some time uh, this morning and for everything that you do. I, I hope I uh, come back again. Thanks again.